Hey. Hey, how's it going? Cool, it's working. First it's time. Working. <laughs> this time it's working. Can you hear me? All right. Too? Yeah. Okay, perfect. I usually forget to put both of my AirPods, and sometimes, uh, even though I'm hearing from here, my voice goes through that. So just always checking in. <laughs> oh, how does how does my audio sound? I'm just talking perfect. into the phone. Okay. Yes. It's perfect. Sounds great. You, we can hear you perfectly. Uh, so, how you been with this quarantine? Everything is, <laughs> yeah, everything's good. Uh, I actually did a keto FX for Paleo FX last yeah. week. A keto uh, portion of Paleo FX. Uh, I had a presentation go up. I just finished, uh, literally right before I got on this call, a KetoCon presentation that got recorded. And will be available, I think it's like the June 11th through the 15th in there. There's going to be five days with 10 presentations a day. Um, and actually right now on the KetoCon site, my old presentations are actually free and available. Oh, wow. Um, where, where can we find them again? It's uh, KetoCon. Um, I think oh, it's, it's just keto, KetoCon. KetoCon.com, I believe. Um Ketocon. Yeah. Uh, no, actually, wait. Ketocon. Let's see. Ketocon.org. Um, yep. Yeah. And then actually, uh, I believe next week, the date has to be nailed down. I am doing, um, a ketogenic.com, um, summit, uh, with wow. some incredible people. Uh, including like Tony Robbins and uh, oh. Tom Bilyeu and uh, of course Ryan Lowry and Jacob Wilson will be involved and uh, just a, a bunch of, of rock stars. Um, it's it's pretty it's pretty awesome. It's a nice lineup uh, of people. So I'm I'm excited to do that. Well, that's great, man. You're you're always busy. Um, that's that's fantastic. When they told me about KetoCon. Do you want to wait till KetoCon 2021? I'm not. No, I'm doing the virtual <laughs> learning. <Yeah. laughs> so I just yeah. sign up for that. The first day they send out the email and I will be, I think I had a question because part of it was send a question to your favorite. And I think I did send it to you. Hopefully you would get it. I don't remember what it was though at a time because this is two months ago. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But uh, yeah, so things are going great. Uh, awesome. And uh and life is good overall. I think, uh, you know, actually one of the things I talked about in my presentation was resilience. That was really the focus. And, you know, there's that uh, mental aspect of stoicism. Uh, but in the, you know, physiologically, we call it hormesis, mm -hmm. like where our, our ability to kind of adapt and overcome and it has to do with our allostatic load, our bucket of stress that we can deal with. And, um, you know, a lot of that has to do with reframing and how we perceive our world. And we can turn something that's distress and negative stress into you stress, a good stress. So uh, a lot of it has to do with how you frame it. And then that really makes a difference in how your body perceives it. So um, that's a big message I'm, I'm trying to put out there. There's a lot that we could focus on that seems negative or fearful or, or sad or scary, um, but there's so much positive that we can focus on right now as well. Um, every, every change can be something positive if you allow it. So True. there's a lot going on right now that's bringing us together in unique ways and uh, there's a lot of new challenges that are helping us adapt and, and overcome as a society. And I think there's, there's some really cool things going on. Yes, I totally agree with you. Does, uh, the nutrients and nutrition has to do anything with what you were just talking about? Like how yeah. we feel and, uh, is that something that you're going to embed in there too? Yeah, absolutely. I get into a number of ingredients, uh, Oh, okay. Certainly the things I've been talking about on my Instagram and with my free downloadable guides on my website, you know, the vitamin C, the, the D3, the zinc and mushrooms and MCT oils. 
MCTO, key panels, <laughs> all that stuff. Yeah. So, so yeah. Yeah, that's that would be great. I was going to ask you about MCT oil, um, mm -hmm. triglycerides. Uh, then I had another question, but I'm going to start with one of the questions that somebody asked here. I'm going to read it in my. Oh, <laughs> well, I see. Uh, I'm 45 years old. 45 years old. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, okay. Perfect. So there's one question in Persian that says, "What are the mistakes?" Let me read it. Says, "اشتباهات رژیم که باعث زعف شدید اعصاب میشه رو بپرسید." He asked me to ask you, "What are common mistakes in ketogenic diet that cause us be nervous and have stress in our lives?" What are what are the things that we can do wrong doing keto that can cause us stress? I'm not sure when she says stress, she means like nighttime, daytime, or just in general. Yeah, so some of the things uh, that you may be doing wrong with the ketogenic diet that could cause stress would be that I see a lot would be doing things like net carbs and really not having the diet understood very well yet. So... Um, and I would start with for the first, um, I don't know, at least three months doing a strict ketogenic diet with maybe like 20 grams of carbs a day. That's very popular. And so then, popular. and then from there start playing with net carbs. <clears throat> and then from there start looking at cyclical or targeted ketogenic diets. But don't start out that way. You you know, it's that scientific rule, do one thing at a time. Get that nailed down. Know what that feels like to your body. Adapt to it. Then start making little tweaks. Then try cyclical and, you know, stick with that for several months. Then after that, maybe try targeted and then stick with that for several months. Mm. Then after that, try net carbs or, you know, playing with some other things. But, like, I think that's a big area of mistake. Um, I don't know if you want to translate that one, or I can give another thing. I was going to do all uh, English, but I can quickly translate if that's what you want me to, because that's what um, – I can do that, whatever you – as you wish, sir. <laughs> do, it, do the translation. I'll, I'll, go through, I'll go through one more that I okay. think is another one that people screw up uh, is – you know, the gluconeogenesis thing, thinking that uh, it's low carb is different than ketogenic. Uh, it's supposed to be a high fat, very low carb diet and with moderate protein. And I think some people think eating clean means eating low carb, low fat. So all they eat is protein. And then you end up hangry with very irritable, small fluctuations in blood sugar that send you all over the place and you're you're not you're not well adapted to glucose and you're not well adapted to ketones and you're kind of in this neither world that's that's really bad um so uh those are probably two big areas that that people screw up i think mm. uh on the ketogenic diet and then I think some people talk about frustrations when, uh, with hormones or with sleep or, you know, the keto flu and some of those things. But typically after two, three, four weeks, those things settle in. You know, you just, you have to give it a little bit more time. I'm going to quickly translate that, but I have two questions. One, uh, about the first thing you said and then about gluconeogenesis. Goftan ke, hal mo karna go tarjumu bo konin, wali khob hala. میگن که چیزی که باعث استرس شما خواهد شد خیلی این هستش که خیلی سریع و بدون اینکه استپ با استپ بری توی رژیم کیتوژنیک یهو بگید 20 گرم کار باید بخورم به شدت بیاید توش بعد همین باعث بشه چیت دی داشته باشید هی بک اند فورت برید و از اون طریق متابولیزمتون هم یه مقدار دمیج میشه دفعه چیز بعدی این که خیلی وقتا شما چربی مورد نظری که بدنتون واقعا احتیاج داره رو نمیخورید فقط کاربوهیدرات رو پایین رو بردید یا اینکه فقط پروتئین میخورید اون چربی ها به بدن نمیرسه این هم باعث استرس خواهد شد So on the net carb thing um, Do you agree that our metabolism is like a teenage a teenager kind of stubborn like uh, in terms of if you push it hard from either side it would 
you can damage your metabolism if you go too hard and you change your diet, your habits overnight. Is that true? What are your thoughts again, uh, on that? If I go, if I'm a huge carb eater, um, literally 60% of my di- uh, daily intake is before keto. And overnight, I decide to go keto. From 70%, I come to 5%. How would that change my metabolism? Would would it damage it? No, it doesn't damage it. It's just there is going to be a period of time that is going to be suboptimal until your body optimizes and calibrates. You know, you're you're radically changing things up. That's why, I like, if if at least this is what I usually recommend is that people don't go straight to the keto diet. That people, that people cut out sugar, that people eat whole food, that people uh, get an exercise regimen in, and they do some intermittent fasting and learn some de-stressing techniques, uh, maybe around food. And you know, including, like, keeping some kind of log and being, like, mindful of when they're eating and why they're eating. If you do those things first, you won't go into keto, and one, you'll you'll be somewhat adapted to ketones for fuel because you're eating a whole food diet that's paleo, and you'll be doing some fasting, and so that'll be helpful. Uh, but two, you won't be like looking for keto desserts constantly because, you know, sugar won't be your master and stress won't be driving uh, your eating as much because you've been doing intermittent fasting and because you've been logging what you eat and being more mindful of what and why you eat. And then lastly, just, you know, having exercise in your regimen will mean you're less sedentary and you're less insulin resistant. So, it's a much better transition. Like, I view keto as a tool, but not the first tool I would grab. You know, it's it helps certainly if you're metabolically broken. It's one of the best tools that you can, you can have. But I think it's important to put some of the other key foundational pieces in place before you jump to keto. Mm-hmm. And then... Uh... Just to make sure I um, understand it right, meanwhile, you're doing the transition before keto to overcome your sugar craving. That's the time you go for keto desserts to mentally prepare yourself for, is that what you said? Just making sure? For the Uh, keto dessert part? I'm not saying keto desserts are bad. I'm just saying like a lot of times when people are on a – a ultra processed food diet and they're hangry all the time and they're sedentary oh. and you know that they'll try and do the keto diet you know dirty keto lazy keto whatever you want to call it where they're essentially eating kind of desserts and crappy keto stuff all day long and ultimately that's not a healthy path and you may actually gain weight while eating keto by doing that because you're not Uh, getting satiety in check, your appetite in check. So um, getting these other pieces figured out will help you go into keto in a very clean and healthy way. With having the foundation. Great. خب بیشتر داشتون در برای متابولیز پرسیدم و گفتن که خب step by step اگر که وارد کیتوژنیک بشید و یه سری بیسیک ها رو فاندیشن ها رو لی اوت بکنید توی رژیمتون مثلا غذای نچرال بخورید هول فود بخورید فست بکنید و اینکه یه سری تکنیک هایی که استرس استرستون رو کمتر میکنه خیلی بهتر هست ورزش بکنید قبل از اینکه وارد کیتوژنیک بشید یعنی مرحله به مرحله بشید خیلی بد هستش که وقتی که یه نفر از لحاظ متابولیکلی شکسته و داغون هست بدنش بخواد یهو وارد کیتوژنیک بشه و خیلی وقتا شما دسرهای کیتوی رو میخورید که به جایی که این کار رو بکنید دسرهای کیتوی رو میخورید که 
برام حالت عصبی و این حالت هایی که دارید رو بگیره ولی خب خیلی وقت و وزنم اضافه میکنید به خاطر که مواد غذایی به بدنتون نمیرسه um, The other question is how can I'm going to read it in Persian گفتن ما همه در مورد عواملی که در کیتو میتونه باعث آسیب به کبد و سفرا بشه uh, What are the things we can do in, on keto um, to damage our liver? <clears throat> Hmm. Uh, not really a whole lot, um, unless you have uh, a certain condition, uh, maybe with uh, you improperly metabolize saturated fats, which which can happen really, really rarely, um, like one in a thousand or something. Uh, but Not really a whole lot. There's not a whole lot of damage to the liver that can happen. I mean, really, the worst damage is when we have a high-fat diet. And this is what drives me nuts when you hear research about high-fat diets being dangerous. I think that's where, where, where this question is coming from. High-fat diet in combination with a high-glycemic carbohydrate diet. Because when insulin's elevated... then you stop um, getting into um, uh, a lipolytic state, like where you're breaking down fat, and you're more likely to store adipose, like with uh, adipogenesis, like for lipogenesis. So, um, you know, there's almost no circumstance in nature where you have high glycemic carbohydrate and high fat in some kind of food. Uh, the only thing I can think of is that a bear has fatty fish and has berries to bulk up with fat so it can hibernate all winter. And that's the only circumstance I can think of where an animal has high glycemic carbohydrate and high fat. So this is what most of our processed foods are, ultra-processed foods, Uh, is high fat, high glycemic carbohydrate, and it's spiking insulin and providing high calories. And uh, that is really the, the worst recipe for your metabolism and your body weight. They said that the damage is a lot of people who have a special diet that is not a special diet, but generally, وقتی که غذای چرب میخورید فش مثلا چرب میخورید با غذاهایی که کربوهیدرات دارن و شاخص گلایسمیکشون بالا هستش و بله در اون زمان هستش که میتونه بهتون ضرر بزنه ولی در شرایط عادی وقتی کیتو میکنید ضربه ای به کبدتون نخواهد البته اینشون یه مدار دیتیل بیشتری گفت ام بیفور آی فایند دیر واز ا I, this is not coming from my personal experience. Um, how, like I never experienced, why do some people get constipated on ketogenic diet? Uh, because of fiber. I mean, you're taking carbohydrate out of the equation and, and reducing your fiber content. Also, you need to be mindful of um, your hydration. That, that is a factor. But your body, like say when you're on carnivore, It, it just depends what your version of keto is. Like, it's frustrating to me when people talk about the keto diet. Like, there's one way. It's a whole range. There's keto is a set of macros, right? It's not a diet. Like, there isn't, like, uh, like you could be vegan and be keto. You could be Mediterranean diet and keto. You could be carnivore and keto. You could be... Just eat junk food and be keto. Um, you could be fasting and be keto. So it's it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, there's so many different ways to be keto. Um, yeah, that's that's a point of frustration for me that yeah. I think is is often misunderstood. But uh, it, say for example, if you were a carnivore, uh, you would change from the need for Uh, fiber from your diet to help with uh, 
gastrointestinal motility to butyrate the short chain fatty acid. And that's how animals that are carnivorous uh, have intestinal motility. So again, it's kind of like switching from, you know, glucose as a fuel to ketones as a fuel. Your gut is switching over in the fuel it uses for motility too. It's switching from fiber to butyrate. Um, or it may end up using some combination thereof, depending on how much vegetables and fiber you have in your diet. So there's a lot of different ways to do keto. گفتن میگه هول رنج متفاوتی هست وقتی میگن کیتو ممکنه شما مدیترینین باشید از دایت مدیترینین داشته باشید ممکنه که ویژیترین باشید و کیتو باشید ممکنه که کارنوور باشید یعنی یه خیلی وسیع هستش که چی کار میکنه خیلی ممکنه به خاطر کمبود آبی هستش که بدنتون میرسه خیلی ممکنه به کمبود فیبری هستش که بدنتون میرسه بعد بلا فاصله میخواستم ازشون سوال بکنم که خب پس اونایی که کارنوور هستن و هیچ فیبری مصرف نمیکنن که بحث بیوتریت رو مشخصا مطرح کردن که بدن مثل زمانی که سوخت گلوکوز تبدیل میشه به میفته روی کیتون ها و شما فت برنر میشید دقیقا همون اتفاق هم برای کسی که کارنوور هستن مثل دقیقا حیوانات کارنوورس میتونن در رودشون این اتفاق بیفته و تخلیه بشه بدون حضور فیبرها و بدن این عادت و این توانایی رو پیدا میکنه و مهم اینه که چقدر ترینش بکنید که حتی در رژیم کارنوور هم بدون یوبوست بتونید این اتفاق برامون بیفته um. So the other question, and I'm going to link it to this question. As I'm pursued, we did that seven months to a regime ketogenic. Has done 15 kilos. Come, can I? Alan, stop the vaccine. Then I'm going to move on. There it is. So it's. I'm going to ask you about gluconeogenesis. There's a protein. Resistance move. And that moderately protein. But we start going to ketogenic. That's a hot topic. Has touched before. I have a question where uh, she is stalling for. Uh, a period of time right now, uh, she has lost 15 kilograms, which is about more than 30 pounds, over three months. But now the other thing, other than stalling, um, she is experiencing losing her hair. Um, I'm going to link it to the other thing you said uh, on ketogenic diet of macros. It's moderately having protein. A lot of misconception of that is, okay, I am afraid... And I have people who take 40 grams, men, 40 grams of protein daily just because they're scared of protein turning into glucose through gluconeogenesis. So how do we balance that? Yeah, it is... I, I, I would say, sorry, uh, the gluconeogenesis is not bad. There's no negative to that. Like, yes, you could potentially be kicked out of ketosis oh no it's okay <laughs> like it's okay like you know nobody has to be in glucosis for like 24 hours a day it's kind of like I've, I've said this before like no one chases blood sugar right like no one's like i've got a 300 i've got a 400 i've got a 600 blood sugar Like, but it's like everyone's chasing ketones like it's the best thing ever. And know that, like, the further you get into ketosis, the more you adapt. And just like being insulin sensitive and glucose tolerant, you become more adapted to using the ketones. So your ketones in time will actually be lower, but you should still feel better. But, I mean, you know, to that end of – Uh, you know, chasing ketones, it's okay if you're not always in ketosis. You're still, you know, adapted to using ketones for fuel, and you're still getting the the protein you need. Um, you know, I think the only time it matters, like, is if, like, you know, you, it's about Parkinson's or Alzheimer's or cancer, like, but When you need those ketones. A person, it's more, I think it's more critical 
to maintain the lean body mass. And so there are some hacks that you can do. You can add um, MCTs or exogenous ketones. You can um, uh, um, take BCAAs or essential amino acids. Um, and those are certainly some things you can do, but, you know, I wouldn't increase be, the ketones. Uh, no, to maintain lean body mass and not okay. have no protein. Um, but I'd say typically 20% of your calories coming from protein is okay. And I think men that have more lean body mass and are more active can get away with 25, even 30% if they're bodybuilders, if they're working out and, you know, intensely. But I tend to see women that are more sedentary and have very low amounts of muscle mass. You know, they can't get away with net carbs as much. They can't have as much protein and, you know, not go into gluconeogenesis. So, like, you have, like, a higher tolerance the more active you are and the more lean body mass you have. And that's just reality. So one of the things you can do to get around that is to work out and get more muscle mass. Um, that's one of the most powerful things that you can do for your metabolism and to allow yourself more flexibility when having carbohydrate or um, protein. Perfect. Cool. ازشون سوال کردم ریزش مو ترس از خوردن پروتئین گفتن که به واسطه گلوکونیوجنسیس گلوکونیوجنسیس چیز بدی نیست اوکی ما موقتا از کیتوسیس برای چند ساعت خارج بشیم و برگردیم بهش پروتئین چیز بدی نیست خیلی از کسایی که مرد هستن شاید بله 20 درصد باید باشه پروتئین خیلی اگه زیاد بشه تبدیل به قند خواهد شد ممکنه شما رو موقتا از کیتوسیس خارج بکنه ولی اشکالی نداره گلوکونیوجنسیس چیز بدی نیست موقتا اگر از کیتوسیس به خاطر پروتئین اگر خارج بشید و اینکه کسایی که مرد هستند و ورزش میکنن با به هر حال تا 25 درصد تا 30 درصد پروتئین هم اوکی خواهد بود یه عده خانوما هستن مشکلی که داریم خانومایی هستن که ورزش نمیکنن سر جوشون نشستن و خب اینا هیچ چیزی ندارن تحملی بدنشون به کار به اضافه و پروتئین اضافه نداره و تنها راهش اینه که ورزش بکنن وقتی ورزش میکنید متابولیزمتون رو بهتر خواهد کرد و کمتر این اضافه پروتئین رو حساس خواهید بود بهش وقتی که ماهیچه در بدن میسازید پس تنها راهش به خاطر اینکه ریزش مو نداشته باشی و بتونید پروتئین بیشتر مصرف کنید اینه که ورزش بیشتری بکنید البته یه سری ساپلمنت ها هم ایشون جزء کسایی هستن که ساپلمنت ها رو میگن گفتن برای جبران مثلا تو کیتوی کلاسیک برای جبران اون محدودیتی که در هنگام کاهش وزن برای پروتئین هست میتونید از آمینو اسید های بی سی ای ای مصرف بکنید یا ام سی تی Oil. Talked about MCT oils. Um, I'm going to go back to your very uh, one to the last post that you had yesterday about MCT oils. I just want to MCT oil. I'm going to post some. One post that was posted that the zanjire is about the MCT oil and triglyceride. Um, I understand from your post, MCT oils are essentials. They're natural foods that we can get them with a little percentage of MCT oils. They're uh, triglycerides. Uh, and there, there are, of course, MCT oils that you can get supplements for MCT oils that are 100%. Um, what are your thoughts about triglycerides? I don't know if has, for people that, that have high triglycerides, Because MCT oil, I just want to link it to that. Um, can we get that increased on ketogenic diet or how would we increase it? Is it like um, LDLs and HDLs that for a while that we're thinking cholesterol is bad for you, it's bad cholesterol, good cholesterol, but now they're talking about, no, it's carbs that are causing mainly the heart attacks and stuff. So what are your thoughts about Uh, triglycerides 
Yeah, triglycerides are something to look at and are correlated to um, positive or negative cardiovascular health. Um, Typically, when you're on the ketogenic diet, triglycerides go down. And like you said, cholesterol can go up, but that is the great pharmaceutical farce uh, that cholesterol is bad. As you said, cholesterol is very good and essential to life, and, and HDL is a good cholesterol, and so is LDL. Uh, to call it a bad cholesterol is very ignorant, uh, honestly. It's, it's very confusing why all that's happened. Uh, there is a very low-density lipoprotein uh, called LPA that is associated with negative cardiovascular health, and that is really the only um, um, uh, chemical or, or type of cholesterol that would be associated negatively with cardiovascular health. Cholesterol is is quite the, the good thing and necessary for cell membranes, necessary for hormonal health, um, just critical in general. It's weird how it got demonized, and obviously you can make the correlation to selling drugs uh, that are putting people at more cardiovascular risk by taking the drugs uh, than not. Um, which is frustrating, but that's a whole other conversation. So uh, triglycerides, I would be mindful of. Cholesterol, I would be less concerned with. I would look at, if I was concerned with cardiovascular health, I would look at CRP, which is a measure of inflammation. I would look at LPA, and I would look at triglycerides. Mm -hmm. So if somebody has a high triglycerides, that is bad. It's not like cholesterol that we're not concerned about it. Triglycerides, they don't need to be high. Right, yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, Dabri, uh, MCT oil so bad care with them, triglycerides so bad care with them. I will tell you that cholesterol is bad, and that cholesterol is bad, and that we have LDL bad, and that we have HDL bad, and that we have 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 bad, پول دارن در میرن هر دو نیاز بدن هست و به قلب هیچ ربطی نداره تنها کلسترول LPA هستش که مستقیما با کاردیو وسکولر سیستم قلبی شما رابطه برعکس داره یعنی هرچی بالاتر باشه نگتیف هستش و اگر که توی کیتوجنی کلسترول بعضی ها میره بالا باید به شاخص های تورمی CRP و LPA نگاه بکنن که ببینن که و تریگلسوراید که بالا نباشه و اگر اینها تو رنج معمولی باشه یعنی تریگلیسیرید CPR LPA نگران کلسترول زیاد نباشیم پرفیکت um, okay. بچه اگه سوالی دارید من تو همه رو دارم میپرسم uh, we have a lot of questions about hair loss, but we did address that. Uh, yeah, I think just you know, definitely look to add, <laughs> if you're losing hair, you're not getting enough protein. And I would also look at not only getting like um, a protein that's going to feed muscle mass, uh, you know, like a whey protein or most animal proteins, uh, but also getting collagen protein in is really helpful. A third of the protein in your body is collagen. And cola means connective, like kind of the glue uh, in Latin. So like think of your skin, hair, nails, uh, bone, um, tendon, ligament, uh, your digestive tract is all collagen. So that's in very important to make sure you're getting enough collagen as well. Um, and if I was losing hair, I would also look at things like biotin and silica. Those are supplements, right? Yeah. Or they can, okay. Uh, Dietin and silica are also added to the things that you can do. But the protein is that... 
مصرف میکنید باید پروتئین و انزه کافی باشه و اینکه I forgot uh, the other thing you said in bone broth brain collagen collagen باید بخورید باید collagen بخورید و فقط هم کولاجن خوب میدونید تو هم تو گوشت هستش هم به چسبیده به استخون هم تو آب قلم و حالا کسایی که دوستان ساپلیمنت رو هم I think we had Ken Berry for a minute in our life I don't know if he's still here um, Dr. Ken Berry Yeah, there's a lot of questions and anyone who I'm not getting to their question please uh, direct message me and I will answer your question Perfect, گفتن که اگر که Uh, هیچ سوالی برخره نمیش به سوالاتتون جواب ندیم دایرکت به من بدید بیشون و سوالاتتون جواب میده و واقعا شان جواب میده I think the other thing was keto rash um, uh, question how can get, they can get rid of it or any type of pimples that they that they have uh, four months in keto um, and they don't have a gallbladder. That's what she's asking. Yeah. Um, no, they don't have a gallbladder? No. They say safra not have and they don't have a gallbladder. They don't have a gallbladder. That certainly makes the ketogenic diet more difficult. I don't know that I would even... be focused on the ketogenic diet if I didn't have a gallbladder. It's possible to do it, but it's really hard. Um, you would need lipase enzymes and certainly a lot of MCTs or else you'll be having horrible indigestion. Uh, so it's possible, but I would just probably focus on more of like a, a paleo type diet, honestly. خب اولین چیزی که گفتن که گفتن اولین چیزی که گفتن کسی که کیسه صفرا شده رو بوده و نداره واقعا خیلی سخت میشه که رژیم کیتوجنیک رو براشون تنظیم بکنی و بسیار سخت است میشه با ام سی تی اویل رو من یو سی ام سی تی اویل اتس بیکاز اتس ا سیمپلر فورم اف فات تو دایجست رایت و ام سی تی اویل رو اینا بکنن ولی خیلی ساجستشن هستش که بیشتر پیلیو باشن و رژیم پیلیو رو انجام بدن و نچرالی خوب بخورن تا اینکه کیتوجنیک باشن خدمت شما این از این and then um, um, yeah she said she doesn't have gallbladder um, so can is, are, are those people going to be can we train our bodies um, not yeah not really Just, it would be very difficult for people without okay گفتن خیلی سخت واقعا چین نمیشه کرد نظرشون هستش که واقعا چین نمیشه کرد کسی که کیسه صفرا نداره هر کسی این سوالو پرسید سوال بسیار خوبی نیست the coconut butter instead of mct i don't know if you mean coconut oil coconut again uh Coconut is about one-tenth as ketogenic as MCT oil, so uh, they're not really comparable. Um, another question about insulin and protein, which we did address that. Um, what happens if we cheat? Agar cheat pokoinim chimisha. What are what are the consequences? How often can we cheat? Uh, we part is going to get out of ketosis. That I, first of all, I hate the word cheat. I am getting out of. <laughs> I was just going to tell you that mentally, that is a very bad use. Uh, it's super self-defeating. Uh, I think there's physiological ramifications to using words like that that will affect your body. Um, So I don't like using that word cheat at all. Um, I have planned carbohydrate meals. I don't view carbohydrate as bad. I do not demonize it. Carbohydrate is a tool. And I have cyclical and targeted ketogenic diets. And I use carbohydrates. Sometimes I have 
candy and sugar and things like that. And sometimes I just have what would be healthy carbs like veggies and even fruits. But I just think about timing and dose and what I'm doing around them. And so when I'm exercising all day, like I'll play eight hours of volleyball, I have whatever I want. That's what I earn. Basically, my body's a furnace, and because I'm metabolically flexible, I can throw anything at that furnace, and I've earned it. And then, you know, two meals a week, I have whatever I want, too. And, like, say on Saturday, you know, I look forward to a lunch and a dinner out with friends or going to a movie, and I can have dessert, and I can have macaroni and cheese or whatever it is. You're making and, me hungry, man. And it's all planned. That's <laughs> the thing. It's not a cheat. It's not terrible. I'm not upset. And you know what? If I have something unplanned, then I just deal with it, and I just get right back on track. I'm like, yep, I had them. I enjoyed it. And now I'm going to fast a little bit, or now I'm just going to get back on a strict keto diet uh, for a little bit longer or whatever. You know, it's, it's not a problem. Mm-hmm. You, know, you can also do like interval training or something like glycogen depletion. So it's not a big deal. خب گفتن که اولا که از کلمه چیت همون که منم اولش گفتم و دوتا ما خندیدیم گفتن کلمه چیت ما واقعا بدن میادن همچین چیزی و ترم... ترمی رو نباید برای بدن استفاده کرد و خیلی ساید افکت داره رو بدنتون از لحاظ منتالی هیچ اتفاقی نمیفته بدن ما از لحاظ متابولیکلی فلکسیبل هست که هر دو تا سوخت رو استفاده بکنه و اینکه شما فکر کنید که همیشه باید توی کتوسیس باشید خودشون گفتن دو روز در هفته با میرن بیرون اون چیزی که میخوان انجام میدن وقتی که یک روز ورزش خیلی سخت میکنن شاید ممکنه شکلات بخورن هر چیزی رو انجام بدن بله ما واقعا ممکن است کتوسیس خارج بشن و برگردن خارج شدن از کتوسیس خیلی طبیعی هستش ممکن اتفاق بیفته و بدن دوباره فقط تنها اتفاقی که حالا اینا ازشون میپرسن و خودم چیزی نگم فقط ترجمه میکنم و بدن دوباره برمیگرده حالا بعد از اینکه برگشتید میتونید یه فست بکنید یا اینکه دایرکتلی برید روی رژیم هر کدوم براتون مناسب تر است برید روی رژیم کیتوژنی که مطلق سفت و سخت تا برگرده بدن به چربی سوزی a lot of people think hey i have to be in ketosis that's my safe area And when I step out of it, even if I had a bite of apple, um, I'm already out. So let me go eat whatever the heck I want because I'm already out. It doesn't matter. Let me have uh, this portion of rice and mac and cheese. Let me have pizza because I'm already out. Let me enjoy this time that I came out. Uh, I came out and then tomorrow I'm going to start over. Is it not, not knowing that our bodies are... meta uh, meta uh, flexible for with b- both both ways so as long as you have sugar in your body yes you're going to come out of ketosis for a while as long as you have that fuel and when you're out of it you're just going to go back switch back to fat burning so yeah, i mean I it depends on on how much carbohydrate you have and have. um and You know, it can take up to two or three days to potentially get back into, like, a deep ketosis. Um, but if you had an apple, then you could probably do some sprints out in the street or in your yard for 10 minutes and, and be back in ketosis. <laughs> like, it's just, you know, it's it's all relative. So, like, I don't like that kind of all-or-nothing mindset of, like, Well, screw it. Now I've, uh, you know, I've broken my ketosis, so I'm going to just have tons of food. And um, that's not really a good mindset to have. Um, it's really about the long play, you know, like, mm. you know, it's about the rest of your life. It's about being healthy for the rest of your life and learning habits that will help you live a healthier life, not losing weight as quickly as possible. That is. type of mindset where you're trying to lose weight as quickly as possible is one that can be very destructive and lead to behaviors like you're talking about. گفتن که من بهشون گفتم که خیلی هستن که یه چیت کوچولو حالا اسم دوباره من کلمه چیت رو به کار. I did say cheat again. 
چیت کوچولو که انجام میدن دیگه میرم پلو و خورش تو همین چی دیگه من آرایدی از که دوستس خارج هم گفتم که وقتی موقتا خارج میشی میتونی بری تو بکیارد یه دونه های انتسی ورکاوت بکنی میتونی بودوی و بلافاصله برگردی و اونو بسوزونی و برگردی دوباره فت برنینگ این که من از کیتوژنیک خارج شدم و فران هستم زایده این فکریه که ما بلافاصله باید دایت خیلی سفت و سختی بگیریم به سرعت و وزن اونو از دست بدیم و این اتفاقات برای بدنمون میافته که درست نیستش و مطلب دیگه که گفتن گفتن مهم اینه که چقدر ما به عنوان لایف استایل هست کیتوژنیک و چقدر طولانی در این رژیم میمونیم نه اینکه چقدر با سرعت وزنمون رو دست میدیم کیتو سویتنرز اریتروتال زایلتو آل اف در در افکت آن stopping the weight loss, slowing down the weight loss. Uh, are they effective? Can we use them as much as we want? I know we can use them at the beginning sometimes to treat ourselves, but can we use them regularly? That's a hot question. And I want to ask about something else after you explain, but before let me say that what I just asked in Persian. I want to ask you 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 to ask There are worse, good, better. Uh, tell us all about them. Uh, sweeteners? Yes. Um, well, first off, we're all very individual, bio-individual, and it's, um, that's one of those things where, like I was talking before about net carbs, maybe it's a non-factor and doesn't raise your glucose, but it will raise someone else's. Um, so it's hard to say you really need to experiment and unless you're really checking blood sugar or ketones or both, uh, regularly, then it's hard to know how it's affecting you, uh, directly. So, um, but in general, I would say that, uh, you know, most people are kind of anti artificial sweetener. Uh, there are, uh, data points. There are some studies that show that They negatively affect uh, the gut microbiome and may make you more likely to be, one, inflamed, and two, store fat more easily um, if you're already overweight. That seems to be the caveat, like with sucralose and aspartame and some of these artificial sweeteners. It seems like if you're already overweight – Uh, they affect you differently. And, and again, with this inflammation and propensity to store more body fat. Um, if I was to choose some sweeteners right now, it would be things like monk fruit, stevia, allulose, uh, et cetera, that are relatively low to zero calorie and are natural um, to – nature in our bodies to some degree so they seem to be a healthier option perfect در باره شیرین کننده ها ازشون پرسیدم گفتن واقعا بدن با بدن فرق داره بایو اندیویدوالی تی رو لغت رو به کار بردن و برای هر کس متفاوت یه نفر واقعا ممکنه قند خونش رو بالا ببره یه نفر ممکنه قند خونش بالا نبره و این اتفاقی هستش که خیلی به دقت باید اگر که میخواد دواردش بشید و مصرف بکنید مگر که دستگاه داشته باشه که بتونید مس... مانیتور بکنید خودتون ولی مسئله مهمتری که وجود داره بالا بردن قند برای بعضی ها که اتفاق نمیفته مسئله هستش که تحقیقاتی در این زمینه شده که میتونه این شیرین کننده ها در مایکروبایو رودتون تاثیر منفی داشته باشه همچنین ممکنه باعث نشون دادن که ممکنه نه نشون داده که باعث التهاب خواهد شد و اینکه تو کسایی که و باعث ذخیره کردن چربی ها خواهد شد مخصوصا برای کسایی که وزن بالایی دارن چیزایی مثل اسپرتیم سوکرالوز و خیلی چیزایی دیگه آپشن های بهتر مانفروت و استیویا و آلیوس هستش ولی درباره اینکه اینها هم بی ضرر هستن چیزی نگفتن گفتن فقط آپشن های 
Uh, loosened skin after weight loss would be our last question. What do we do when we lose a lot of, is there a way around it? When we lose 100 pounds or huge amount of uh, weight, not to have your skin loose or that's that's how it's going to be and then there's surgical options? Yes. I, I mean, to some degree, you can't avoid it. And Two, you can definitely address it surgically. Uh, there's things that you can do to make your skin be a little bit more resilient and elastic, and that would be adding things like shea butter to your skin. Uh, and then, again, hydrating well, getting enough protein so you're not losing lean body mass along with the fat mass. And then uh, taking the collagen, which will help with skin integrity. Perfect. گفتن که تا یک حدی میشه این از دست دادن شل شدن پوست رو جبران کرد با دایت تو البته خب بالاخره تا یه حدی فقط هستش و واقعا آپشن های عمل و اینجور چیزها هنوز روی میز هست اما تا یه حدی وقتی دارید وز از دست میدید کره شی S-H-E-A نمیدونم فارسی چی به ایچ میگید آب بنز کافی خوردن، پروتئین بنز کافی خوردن و کلاژن بنز کافی خوردن میتونه شما رو کمک بکنه که پوستتون شل کمتر شل بشه نه به طور کامل از دست بشه. Well thank you Sean. Like always you're amazing. I'm pretty sure uh, they would follow your page. They would ask you on direct many questions and with your amazing uh, website um, YouTube uh, So you're all over social media with great work. I love your page. I love your uh, Instagram page, YouTube channel. Uh, thank you for the knowledge, for sharing your knowledge. Thank you for educating us. Um, every day I learn something, and you have to show me how you do your graphics. You have to show me the secret. They're, they look amazing, man. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I'm here for you. Um, I'm here for any of your followers, like you just said. Like I'll, any of the questions we didn't get to, please uh, direct message me, and I will get to them. So I appreciate all you guys. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you want to say "Khodafis" in Persian? I mean, "Bye" in Persian. Do you want to say "Goodbye" in Persian? Yeah. Khodafis. Khodafis. There you go. Khodafis. Khodafis. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Take care. All right, see you, brother. Bye. خب آقا تا 